Today, we are all excited about this just incredible mm -hmm. phenomenon that swept all across the USA mm -hmm. and elsewhere last night. Yes, and there's a chance you can see them again tonight. We are talking about the Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. Amazing, also known as the Aurora Borealis. There also are Southern Lights mm -hmm. too, but you know, you got to go way down there, <laughs> Southern Hemisphere to see that. But the Northern Lights are almost never visible mm -hmm. in places like Texas. Yes, I saw them a couple times last year in central Oklahoma. My parents mm -hmm. saw them last night. They were sending me pictures. There's been a few reports in Houston suburbs. I know mm -hmm. College Station potentially, yeah. but nothing like that's been happening in places like Kansas, Nebraska, where they were really prominent. Yeah, it was like the dancing northern yes. lights up there. So we are going to have a full explanation on what in the world is the deal with northern <laughs> lights? What causes all this? Could we see it again? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about that ahead, but we want to share some some video and some pictures with you uh, that we've been um, you know, kind of sharing through the uh, morning. Now, this first round of pictures that we're looking at are actually from Texas. These were actually visible in Texas, and a lot of these were from um, like Central Texas mm -hmm. area, um, Granger, Texas, not too far away from the San Antonio area. Um, but these were a couple of these were close closer to Houston than you might imagine. Yes, and like there's been faint reports from Mexico. Florida. Yes, again, Florida. very faint. You have to catch it really at the right time when you're having these substorms going on. Right. And sometimes the the um, the camera that you're using helps also. Mm -hmm. But but this is amazing. So um, we have another set of slides here. Now this one was from Seattle. This was actually posted by the National Weather Service office in Seattle. I mean, it looks like it's from another world. Mm -hmm. This is Arizona. This is from the northern parts of Arizona. And notice this was sort of a, a red, kind of a purple red color. So there's different colors and we'll tell you why we have different colors. Yeah, that's kind of the, the really interesting mm -hmm. part of all this is that some folks saw sort of the pink um, with a hint of you know, a little bit of blue at the mm -hmm. bottom. Other places it was just sort of like a bright green. Yeah, you see a little faint of green in the right hand side of the screen. Yeah, and um, so you know what this was spotted um, by space weather forecast. There are there is a space weather prediction <laughs> agency. It was actually spotted by them. Um, before it ended up hitting the Earth, this so-called coronal mass ejection and solar flare. And we'll talk about what all that means uh, coming up. But, you know, some of this video, again, it's like you said, you know, you were on social media. It, it's thousands and yes. thousands of pictures. Yes, I have people on TikTok commenting pictures from last night all across the country, and it's beautiful. And it's amazing, depending on latitude, it does seem like the farther north you go, the better the chances were mm -hmm. to see these green colors, yes. which which really I think is sort of like what you really want to see is green overhead. Those that's sort of like the the uh, top of the heap, you know, when it comes to seeing the northern lights. Um, so outstanding. You know, we even had a, a similar picture to this uh, that we were looking at. Our chief engineer uh, came in. Charles Hughes showed us his phone uh, that was from the uh, Sam Rayburn um, uh, area of East Texas. Mm -hmm. And it was impressive. It was, we were like, whoa, that's yeah. taken on an iPhone? <laughs> like that was on an iPhone, <laughs> yeah. really? And it's not AI. So anyway, let's get into the discussion, guys, of you know, what in the world actually is, is causing all of this. So here is the potential for who could see it again tonight. Yes, forecasting these types of things is incredibly hard. So last night kind of overperformed yes. in ways. And this night, we've known that the flare we're expected to hit Earth today is expected to be stronger than what we've seen the past couple of days. Mm -hmm. So that's why tonight has always kind of been the better chance. Right. It, it, it sort of last night looked like it was going to be much more visible to the north, but surprised everybody. So what we're really hoping tonight is that it'll be another big surprise. So, of course, all of this is due to uh, a couple of things. The sun sending charged particles toward the Earth and also this magnetic field that surrounds planet Earth. And what it creates is this shield, this magnetic field that deflects most of really a lot of the harmful particles mm -hmm. that would be bombarding the Earth, deflects them either around the Earth or to the North Pole and to the South Pole, which is why you have the Northern Lights and the <laughs> Southern Lights. And they get much more vivid when you have a solar storm. Yeah, which is kind of what we're seeing right now. We are technically in a G4 geomagnetic storm right now. 
And so we've just had a couple solar flares the past few days coming off a specific sunspot and they've gotten gradually stronger. Mm -hmm. So the stronger emissions are heading towards Earth and when they are stronger, they can break part of the magnetic field. Right, and, and that is when things start getting really wild when those um, charged particles, which are mostly electrons, there's other things mixed in there too, but the, you know, the sun is made of hydrogen primarily and so you just have one uh, electron, you have one proton, and when they break apart, you end up with the electrons surging toward Earth. And this is where it gets really interesting when you have one of these uh, big ejections of particles coming from the sun, then you have much more frequent collisions taking place. And it's really interesting depending on what atom it hits and all this stuff, a lot of that can dictate how bright the color is and what the color is. Yes, primarily we see a lot of nitrogen and oxygen. And those primarily give us the certain colors we're seeing, green, red, pinks, blues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, and, and honestly, I didn't really even know all this um, could be broken up into these colors. And so the oxygens are more likely to give you this sort of uh, dancing reds and greens, while the nitrogens are a little bit more likely to give you the purples and blues. And, and these, this is always like under ideal circumstances. It's going to be a mix mm -hmm. um, a lot, but I mean, it's really amazing. And the reason that we haven't really told you much about this in the past is it just doesn't happen here. Yeah, it typically doesn't happen here. I remember last May when we saw them in Oklahoma, you really don't see them in central Oklahoma. And mm -hmm. so even down here in Houston, it's even harder, but it can happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. We're at the end of the solar cycle right now. And so that's why things are really active and we're getting all these mm -hmm. geomagnetic storms more often than what we typically would. Yep, uh, something that just was sort of, you know, basically unheard of happened in, in what, May of 2024. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people were really surprised to see the Northern Lights then. And then it's something very similar that's happening this time, but maybe even a little bit more this time. So once again, an overview of tonight's potential activity. Again, these things like Peyton mentioned, very difficult to forecast how mm -hmm. far south they're going to be visible. Um, a lot of it just has to do with the specifics of like NOAA and NASA. They can they know that there is an ejection mm -hmm. of particles from the sun, but to actually track whether the bulk of them are coming directly at Earth or maybe will miss us, you know, mm -hmm. a million miles to, yes. you know, off the northern uh, part uh, hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, that becomes a lot more difficult to, to predict. But this is the overall uh, view of what to expect tonight. And again, you're mostly going to be looking to the north. Yes, looking to here. the nor north. Primarily around 7 p.m. to midnight, okay. 11 p.m., that's the best window. The bigger ejection is expected to hit Earth around 3 o'clock, and if it can hold the longevity this afternoon. This afternoon yeah, yes. so, so that'll be on the other side of the Earth, obviously, but will, like you said, like I guess the evening probably, mm -hmm. There'll be more charged particles sort of still bombarding the Earth as opposed to maybe waiting. Yeah, later. holding that strength because mm -hmm. last night these storms were so strong and they held that longevity. We had multiple substorms. So again, around 7 p.m., 11 p.m. to midnight, closer to that white line. You can't really see them with the naked eye. You're going to need your phone camera. Go outside, point it north, and you'll see the colors kind of pick mm -hmm. up on your phone. One other thing, so you can plan your whole night around this because before the Aurora hopefully comes out, you can also see the International Space Station yes. love spotting the ISS. Um, so this is going to appear in the sky off to the southwest after sunset tonight. So this is about 6.06 .06 p.m. and it will drift across the sky uh, for about six and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is um, the reason it's special this time is that it's high up in the sky. Most of the time we see the space station is kind of low and you can only see it for a minute or two. But I actually saw the space station one time years ago in the parking lot uh, of Fox 26. I'm like, oh, it's going to be passing by at 6 -0, whatever. So in between my weather hits, I went out there, looked at it. It's it is more amazing than you would even think. It's just like it looks like a bright star. And you can follow it for like five minutes, just keeps moving across the sky. So it's an amazing thing. So that is happening. Oh, and uh, Director Bradley says he caught it live on the air too. So that is tonight, uh, Wednesday night at 6.06, .06, from around 6.06 .06 to 6.12 or yes. so. Lots of space things happening here in Space City tonight. Oh yeah, all kind of space stuff going on. So we, uh, fingers crossed, we are mm -hmm. definitely hoping to see the Aurora again for tonight. Mm -hmm. So that's our overall explainer and stick around. We have uh, JD coming up next.